Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Well, as you can see, I got the Triple Fine TF35 Pro drone down here on the, on the uh, landing pad. I'm gonna go ahead and take that up for a test flight today. Now, I did do a table review overview for this in the previous video. I'll try to remember to put a card up here, but if I happen to forget, just check back. It should be the video right before this on the channel. If you want to get a closer look at this drone and what it all comes with. But it does have brushless motors, a two axis gimbal, so she gets a nice smooth video a 4K 30fps camera, and it has remote ID module built into it. So that means that you're gonna be compliant here in the United States if you fly this drone since it is, it, weigh, it weighs more than 250 grams. So let's get it up in the air and fly it. Now I have already done the compass calibration on this drone, but I did have a little weird issue. And my 32 gig SanDisk Extreme card I put in it, which I had tested at home, would record about 15 seconds, the app would beep at me, and then we'd just stop recording. So I took off for just a moment <laughs> and used a little bit of battery. I had to run home. I have a 64 gig Lenovo card I picked up on AliExpress a while back. It seemed to work at home. It didn't do the beeping, it didn't stop. So let's go ahead and, and get it up in the air now. So we are gonna first start recording that video. So just gonna press the record button on the controller, and now we've got uh, the timer going, and it's not doing like before. Before, which you guys don't know, you weren't able to see, and that little flight there while I go, it would flash at me, and it, and it kept beeping, and it'd go about 15 seconds, and it would stop, and it was formatted inside the drone, just like I did this one, so I don't know what it was. Let's go ahead and just push both sticks down and in. Let's go ahead and take off now. The first thing you wanna do is just let it hover for a second. That looks nice and stable. That's good. Let's just take it forward now. I'm kind of letting off the, the forward pitch center. That's why it kept rocking like that. Let's just kind of turn it around here. And you can see me right there. Let's bring it forward a little bit. Bring it down so you guys can see me there forward a little bit let's just do a little bit of a rocket back and forth here just to see how does that gimbal work does it stand nice and steady I can only see the top half of me there but that's good enough let's just take it back a little bit now and bring it down a little bit let's go ahead and just kind of do like a manual droning here let's now you can tilt the camera down a little bit like this, see? It's a pretty smooth tilt too. It's not, you know, um, herky-jerky like some of the toy ones, but it's a little bit sensitive, like I'm going a little bit too far here. Let's back it up. Let's just see if we can just kind of take off now and kind of do a manual one. Yeah. And I'm just doing that with the sticks here. I'm not... That's not the automated droney that it has. Let's just turn it here. Seems pretty smooth. Now I think there was, there's several speed rates. Let's see. Now let's go to the lowest one there. I think it may, yeah, there, it starts out in the, in the middle rate. I'm just gonna kind of fly it around here. There's a lot of glare in that sun. So we gotta keep that in mind. It's gonna show up in my camera probably. This flies really nice. We we'll just have to see how that, how it does, how the camera is, because the original SJRC, which this is a rebranded the F11 Pro, it would uh, that camera was not the greatest. It, the gimbal works great, but let's just let's put the uh, let's, you know push the gimbal uh, the the dial the wrong direction. Let's take it out a ways this way. I, I wanted to go that way, but. The sun glare is so bad. Now, I'm not giving it full pitch all the time. Let's go ahead and go all the way up into the highest rate. And let's take it out towards the other lake over here. But man, it's gonna, we're gonna switch to the camera on board because that's going to uh, quickly get out of range here. It's gonna go up higher. You hear those geese in the background. 
you have a nice steady signal. There was a little bit of lag there whenever I uh, gave it some yaw. You're gonna have a little lag on anything like this. And here's the biggest lake in the rear here. But yeah, I would say that the controls, the sticks are not super sensitive. And by that, I mean, when you give it, a, you have to give it a little bit more input than you probably expect before it will uh, actually make the drone do something. That's why you probably saw me kind of rocking as I was pitching forward. I was just giving it a little bit of pitch. Well, we're out quite a ways now. We're out. I thought I had switched this to Imperial since I'm a little more familiar. We're out about 2,000 feet. Yeah, and we're in the highest rate. Now you can see it really booked back as I yaw. So you're going to, as you get out farther, you're going to have a little bit more lag. But we have a nice signal, no breakup. But as I do give it a bit of, of, of the input, you can see how it swung all the way around. Okay, let's, let's see if we can yaw around here. It's, like I said, we have a good signal to see how it's sort of like, we did all, like a whole circle as I was yawing. I was waiting for it to actually catch up with the video or maybe respond, I don't know. So we're getting a bit more lag, but we do have a good signal. So let's go ahead and do return to home. And it says return to home and it's probably going to beep at us it's going to fly back now if we look inside the app here you can see i have beginner's mode off i have the distance set at about that 11,483 feet and the flight altitude set up just below 400 we have to stay below that here in the u.s I have the return to home altitude set at about 98 feet so let's just wait for it to return back here and it is it is flying back you can see the uh distance is dropping and we'll see how accurate it is here we got some trees and stuff here so uh, if it looks like it's off i'll have to um you know take over controls it looks to me like we've got a little bit of uh tilted horizon here you can adjust that inside the app um, i know that the one i had before the, the original one the gimbal was great this gimbal seems to be working pretty good but like i said we do have some tilted horizon there which You'd expect it to fix that, but yeah, that's pretty bad. I wasn't expecting that because the original one I had worked so well. We'll see once we land if it corrects itself. It looked like it was good until we got really far out there and I started to, uh, it was yawing around a bunch. Again, I don't normally like to fly stuff out that far unless it's, you know, a really expensive DJI or something because you have to, uh, it just makes you a little nervous and you're really not supposed to fly outside a line of sight anyway. So I can hear the drone and here it is up overhead. And we'll watch as it comes down. We don't want it to hit these branches here if it's off a little bit. I'm off to the side so it looks like it's under it but this is a clear path here. And it looks to me like the gimbal has corrected itself now that it's yawed. So once it moved, uh, when you do return to home you're probably not going to be recording that video for any use anyway. So if the crooked horizon was mostly in return to home, that's not so bad. Well, it's kind of correcting itself. Again, this is not a super expensive drone. Um, I think it's like, I'm trying to remember. I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe push it for, let's see, is it gonna miss this log? We're gonna be off a little bit here. Looks like we're gonna be, oh, I'm gonna push it forward. I don't wanna, I didn't wanna hit that. Sometimes these drones can be a little finicky about detecting the ground. But yeah, this seems to work pretty decent. I mean, that's not great, but that's within what you say, I guess, a margin of error when you're just using GPS. This has no precision landing. Precision landing is where you're going to use a, either the gimbal or typically a downward facing camera to look for things on the ground that it recognizes. Some of them just look for a, have to have a, a, you know, a landing pad. Some don't like Femi. Use the landing mat. All right, we're still recording. Let's go ahead and just take it up again. I think in the app you can do an auto takeoff. Let's see if that works. Please unlock and take off. Well, I'll have to press take off. That's interesting. You slide the slider, but then you actually actually have to press the take off button. Tell you what, as much as I want to film the lake, this glare is really bad. So you might fly the drone here west. That way I can 
film the drone without getting tons of sun glare. Let's see, are we in the highest rate? Right, that's middle, highest. Let's go, let's see, how's that yaw? That's the highest. Now we're in the lowest. You can see it. Does it speed up? Yeah, a little bit. Let's go in that lowest rate. That's going to be the best rate for filming. You can kind of fly over here and there's the... Uh... Now, as I'm closer, the yaw and the controls are in much more responsive or not getting that input lag that you're going to see because as you get farther away it just the video just becomes laggier on all the drones and you know even your DJI's will some but not as not as much as, as this one so you can see the flag poles here I'm just trying to to uh, do that uh, uh, kind of circle around it manually that's hard to do Just kind of looking back at the lake. Where is the flagpoles over here? Or maybe, oh, there it is. See, very calm day. Let's fly it forward here. Let's go up. We've got some, I think those are turkey vultures you see flying around here. Yeah. So let's just kind of fly it. Let's go over the pole. We don't want to hit it. Oop. Go over the pole. Well, let's bring it back around here. So see now it says we have 60% battery. So despite the fact that it said so low when we took off, you can see it seems like it's corrected itself. And we're going pretty slow. This is a mode you'd want to fly in if you were uh, wanting really concerned about filming. The higher rates are going to be more for flying in higher wind situations, or if you need to book it back home and your battery's getting low. So it seems to hover nice, nice. This flight's pretty good. I, overall, I'm pretty impressed. The few little app glitches have seen to sort of sort of themselves out. The range was good. You know, a lot of those drones you get, they're Wi-Fi based. They would have dropped off way before that. Because that's one thing this drone has as well, which I mentioned in the table review is this connects to the, uh, your phone here through this ca USB cable here. And I, don't, I want to make sure that I didn't have any antennas I forgot to put up. And it doesn't appear that I do. But yeah, it's all built into it and it's basically coming in. The, uh, the video signal's coming in to an antenna using its own proprietary type connection. It's not Wi-Fi based, so yeah. It, this reminds you, this controller is similar to like the, uh, the DJI Mini 2's type controller uses. It's similar to that. But yeah, we're in GPS mode. You can switch this out into just altitude or addy mode. I'm not gonna do that. But that would allow you to just fly freely a little more faster, but it's not gonna hold its position and you would not be able to use any of your smart features to return to home or anything like that. So let's just kind of fly it out over the lake here. Yeah, we still have a good battery. Now I kind of have the cord in front of the dot on top of the dial here. I was trying to, I wanted to just tilt the camera down a little bit and we can go out over the lake. Got a lot of glare from the sun. Let's tilt it back up. Oop, wrong way. I get bad about these, and some of these dials will be weird. One, one uh, will have one direction, and another company will use a different direction for up and down, like if it's inverted or not. This is a nice little flyer. I think if you get this for the good, uh, right price, I'd say this is probably worth it. You know, it's. Since you got remote ID, you don't have to worry about the fact it's over 250 grams, unless you just don't want to have that. Some people don't. Now in the app, there was supposed to be information here about your remote ID, but I do not see it. They mentioned it in the uh, app, in the instruction manual, that there was a spot you could click, and I don't see it. You just had this little 
a random number spinning around, which I think is some sort of a, I forget what that was. Marcus, my friend Marcus told me before what that thing did. I can't remember. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing that in the app. So it looks like they never implemented that. I was gonna show you guys that, but it doesn't look like it has. It would, it would tell you what your remote ID module was broadcasting. This is so if someone's being a fool and they're doing something dumb, a local authority could see what drone it is, and more importantly, would get the GPS coordinates of the drone and the pilot so that they could go uh, make them stop. I think we have enough batteries still. Let's try and see if we can do some of those uh, smart features. Now, I don't know if it's gonna start recording video when you do those features or if it's uh, if it'll stop your video and start another one. So I'm just gonna keep it recording and we'll try, see if we can see if we can do a couple of these. I wasn't really intending on it, but it seems like we have adequate battery. So let's uh, click over here and it looks like we have GPS follow. Let's try like Farfly. I think that's gonna be, yeah. And that is your droney, your automated. And it looks like it's still recording my video. So it doesn't automatically record it. A lot of the drones like DJI will just record a separate clip. And oh, it does look like it stopped recording. Well, maybe it did. <laughs> I don't see it recording anymore. It showed that it was. Hopefully everything's good on the uh, SD card. Yeah, it, it will fly back and return to a similar spot, but it looks to me like we're, it's higher than where it took off from. So now we're just going with the screen recording. It looks like we're not recording video. So it did look like canceled, but hopefully it recorded that. If not, we'll just see the screen recording. Let's see if it automatically records if we go to like um, this point of interest. Um, the sky fly. I think this is going to be like a rocket mode. So I'm going to put the camera down. It's facing all the way down. Let's see if it records video. Yes. So it is doing what I thought. So I don't know if that first time it recorded because I did not stop my video. Hopefully it didn't ruin the whole video we were uh, filming before. But I just didn't remember the instructions if it uh, recorded automatic or not. Again, most of them do. So what I initially said was wrong. It does automatically record. And here it's coming back down. I'm just going to go ahead and put the camera back up. So we're facing forward. It's not going to land or anything, but. So let's see if um, we can do a point of entry. We can do a spiral and we want to get up higher to do something like a spiral. So let's get it up here. I want to make sure it doesn't like fly into the, you know, the flagpole or something dumb. Let's see if we can do that spiral fly. And here it's going to, I'm, gonna lower, I'm lowering the camera a bit here. It's going to go slow here and it's going to gain altitudes. It does a kind of like a funnel. As you'll see, it's hard for me to look up. You can see the base of the flagpole there. But it is gaining altitude as it goes around. Then it'll stop at its apex. And then it should, and you can see how much higher it's gotten. There's a real plane over here, it looks like. I think, or is that a bird? No, that's another bird. Sunshine on the bottom of that turkey vulture. And it should fly just straight back down to similar spot where it took off. Again, on the drony, it seemed like it came back a bit high. Didn't quite hit its spot. But yeah, this thing, this is working really well. I have no big gripes. The input lag is about the only thing I've seen so far that I would even complain about, but that's so common as you're flying one of these drones out of ways that that's what caused me to over yaw and I was spinning around in circles out of the lake. But I was out, you know, quite a ways there, several thousand feet. Um, and we could have gone a lot farther because the signal was rock solid. It's just, you're gonna have input lag 
with any of these drones um, outside of maybe a DJI or an Altel. Those are about the only ones that are not going to do that as bad. They still have some. Uh, the GPS follow. Let's try that. This is going to follow. Now, I'm not recording uh, video on the uh, SD card, so we'll just see the screen recording here. I'm going to back it up manually here, but it should follow me. So it should back up if it works right. Let's see if it is. Let's make sure we're doing it. I didn't cancel it. I may have canceled it. Let's try it again. I think I maybe canceled it. We're going to back up. Yeah. Let's go this way so you don't hit the tree. And it may just yaw. This is working really, really well. This is a really, I'm not, I'm not surprised. The SJRC that makes this, they're one of the, they're a brand you don't hear about, but they're probably the one budget unknown Chinese drone brand. It's not DJI, not Altel, not Femi, that actually makes some pretty decent drones. All right, that seems to be working pretty good. It's just, see it's easing up forward now. Seemed like whenever I just gave it inputs, it was, it stop and no idea once I give it stick inputs it canceled it so that's all you got to do just give it some stick inputs that's why it didn't work the first time for a moment because I'd actually tried to correct where it was first let's see what else do we have here we have the image follow we can try now one thing I'm not going to be able to get to today our battery is getting down in our ways is it does have a panoramic mode and a time lapse and I'm not going to be messing with those today but I expect they're going to work just fine. We can see everything else is. So image follow. Um, let's see if this is going to work for us. Do we have to draw a box? There we go. And it's going to use AI, your smartphone, to try to follow me. And is it doing it? Yes. Now that's great. Because this mode is one that I never, I literally never see him work right on these lesser known brands they almost always you just walk out of the box and they're terrible this is working great so what this is going to allow you to do is if you have a something you want it to follow and it's not you with the controller because the gps follow is going to be your most accurate because it's following the gps coordinates in your phone this is going to allow you to follow another person uh your dog if it's not moving too fast let's see if it turns this way oh i see for me, even an RC car, as long as you don't go very quick, you could you could have it track an RC car. This is something that DJI and even Altel originally came out with probably five plus years ago. Smart tracking, and some of these lesser brands have implemented, but this is the first one I've seen that really works. Boom, no problems. Other ones, let's see if a stick inputs cancel it. No, I tapped the screen, and that seemed like that may have reset it. No. Not sure, huh? I got control that just doesn't let me bring up the. Uh, I tapped the screen that seemed to cancel it. But. They typically you might do these and you might have it work, you know, one out of five times for a moment and then it stops. But this one seems like it works perfect. Now again, if you move too quickly. Then it's going to probably lose it. You've got to be, it's got to be falling something slow. It's rocking a bit here as I'm just manually flying it over. And it's what's happening is the drone's trying to uh, hover and hold its coordinates and I'm input and it's trying to correct itself and its whole position. That's not that uncommon for a GPS drone. It won't do that if you're flying in the ADDI mode or the altitude hold only mode. I gotta say I'm super impressed with the flight time on this because you know obviously it was giving me a kind of a bogus reading here. Now it, now it's saying low voltage, so now it's picking up. Otherwise, this drone flies great. Every feature I tested work, we were out a half a mile. I could have gone farther and had no problems except for your typical input lag that you'll see at that range. And that's something you know you're not gonna fly out that far to film an object very much because you're always going to encounter that lag but if you're just flying out just for a, a straight flight it's going to work just fine guys all right that wraps up the review for the triple fine 
TF35 Pro. If you're interested in this drum, I have a uh, purchase link down in the video uh, description. Also the pinned comment. And there is a coupon code. Um, there is good for a month. They're going to give me a new one once that expires. So if you see this more than a month out, I think it was 10% off. I don't remember. And I, again, I don't, that triple fine was kind enough to send this out for review. I wanted to think it was, was around $310 after the clippable coupon on the, uh, there's a clippable coupon on the Amazon listing. You might make sure you clip that. I think it was 60 or $70 off. It's going to drop it down. I believe it'll be, don't hold me to this. I'm in my head. I think it'd be below 300 once you use the coupon that they gave me, which was like five or 10% off. All right, guys. So if you enjoy videos like this and you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. While you're at it, click that bell. That way you'll be notified when I upload these videos. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side, 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 side.